My question tonight is what is truly the way to accessing the supplies of heaven? Let me give you a guarantee. I promise you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you listen to me, you will never, never be poor. If you listen to me, you will never be small. It's a guarantee I give you in the name of the Lord. Forgive me if I sound arrogant, but it's true. Just pay attention to this thing. Don't, don't, don't tamper with the equation when you don't have results. Get results first, then you can say, oh, you are wrong, I discovered another route. I'm not going to be talking so much about the spiritual principles we understand. I just want to pick one of the subjects that the Lord put in my heart and drum it into us. And then we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Increase in the kingdom. Increase in the kingdom. Increase in this kingdom is a product of value. Write it down. Increase in the kingdom. The greatest gift that can happen to a man is to be shown the systems and the ways that construct your life to become valuable. Please listen very carefully. The law of value. Your value defines your degree of usefulness. Please write it down. Your value defines your degree of usefulness. The degree to which you are needed within a civilization, within a sociological context. The degree of your usefulness. Not just your uniqueness. Not just your skill. You can have skill that is not useful to the context of a civilization. The degree of your usefulness is what we call your value. And God so designed that the supplies of heaven are routed. Listen carefully. The supplies of heaven are routed through the medium of value. That when God wants a believer and one who is a citizen in the kingdom to rise to a point where you begin to access the riches and the blessings of heaven, He does not just favor you as it were with giving you money, but He brings you to a pedestal in life where it becomes impossible to ignore you. Are we together now? There are many ways he achieves that. But that the gateway into accessing the supplies of heaven experientially is becoming valuable. Now, but most people, most of the teachings on value does not capture the full import of what makes it rewardable. It's not enough to know that your value is a measure of your usefulness. Just because you have something that is useful to me does not mean you will be rewarded for it. There are many people carrying useful things but are not rewarded for it. They are valuable, yet they are not rewarded. Is that true? So what is the system that translates your value to compel the environment that you live in to come gentiles coming to your light and then they are kings to the brightness of your rising get this tonight and you will thank me tomorrow i've taught you here that your value decides who pursues you it's true your value decides who pursues you you know you are valuable 
by the extent of demand that is placed on your grace, on your skill, on whatever it is that you represent. Now, most believers will frown at what I'm saying. That's why they are poor. That's why they struggle. We pray, and that's very important. We study the word. We are faithful in church, but we do not understand the systems allocated to bring us out of this qualo of hardship. Many of the things we try to address are symptoms of one central deficiency value in the area where value plays nothing will cover for it are we together now so your value is a reflection of the extent of your usefulness and i've taught you also that who pursues you determines the magnitude of your reward it is not just because people are pursuing you the quality of people pursuing you is also the quality of the reward that accrues to you. If a president needs you, you will be rewarded at the level and at the stature of a president. Is that true? Yes. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. No way. How can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? No way. No way. Because you are my God. The ever present help in time of me. That when you become valuable, you will command dominion in a way and manner that will not only bring God glory, it will bring glory to you, it will bring glory to your family, you will bring beauty and glory out of your life when you become valuable. Peg at a level where your usefulness cannot be ignored. Peg at a level where every other factor to downplay your usefulness becomes inconsequential. That you rise to a point where not gender, not geographic limitations, cultural barriers, etc. That none of these things sustain the ability to be reason enough for men to ignore you. That's valid. Value is not that you have something that is, is being biased by loyalty. So I have something that only my tribes people patronize. And they are only doing that just because they had that my name reflects that. And they, oh, you are from this state. And okay, let's come and buy this. No, when you sustain an ability and you peg yourself at a pedestal in life, where regardless of what else is not important in your life, people ignore it because of the necessity of what you carry. You are valuable. It was said about Jesus, all men seek for you. Not some. Not Yoruba people seeking for a Yoruba man. Not Igbo people seeking for an Igbo man. Not Northern people seeking for a Northern man. This is largely what we call value in our world. So if I have value now, I just quickly go and look for my people and say, I'm the son of the soil. Your boy has come with this if you leave me like that. And so we have a crowd of people. It is, it's largely just ethnocultural. But that God put something in your life, my brothers and my sisters, that will cause all men regardless of value nobody will ever ask you where you come from they don't care whether you are male or female nobody cares whether this water was made by a male hand or a female hand nobody cares whether once you are thirsty to the point of death you say let me have that water whether it was made by a child or an adult the moment people create certain factors to demean you you are not valuable enough if any other excuse is worthy enough to frustrate you, then you are not valuable. If you listen to what I am telling you, your children will bless you tomorrow. Years ago, the Holy Spirit would tell me, pay attention 
and let me make you valuable. I didn't understand the extent of what he was saying. Oh, today I'm grateful. There is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. Let me repeat. There is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. If you do not trust God to take you to a point where you become extremely valuable, I give you a guarantee in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. As far as accessing supplies by yourself here on earth is concerned, you will live a frustrated life. It's a matter of time. And I'm not talking of business here or a job here. <clears throat> Leave all those things first. You see, it is your value that gives life to those things. They don't give life to you. Many have not been taught that part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives is not just to help us know God. It's not just to help us walk in character. The Holy Ghost upgrades men. He came into our life to build us to a point where we become valuable. The Bible says Jesus increased in wisdom. Listen carefully. Jesus increased in stature. Jesus increased in favor with God and with men. The Holy Ghost does not come into the lives of people and then reduces them to a point where the only thing useful about them is their knowledge of God. No, sir. Is God speaking to us tonight? Value. When your world comes to you, they watch to see what it is that you have in your hands that you are going to exchange for the reward they have. You are valuable when no amount becomes regrettable to commit to you. When no amount becomes, that means nobody would drop something and turn back and say, I was stupid for dropping one million. I just came. I know Pastor Alpha is anointed, but ah, ah, one million, what entered me? No. When nothing in this world becomes worthy enough to reward what you carry, you are valuable with beyond imagination and this is where god is taking us to because let me tell you if you have that even if you are inside a hole i guarantee you you will not beg for bread i hope god is speaking to you you see i love you that's why i'm telling you this the devil will tell you don't mind him then make sure you don't have children make sure that you you, you are not the one who will be taking care of your relatives. Do you know how many well-meaning believers who love God are still asking God questions still today? Lord, this is unfair. My father was a pastor. My mother was a pastor. I'm a preacher. I love you with all my heart. What is all this one that I'm seeing now? 90% of the discussion in homes is money. Finance. Madam, what are you bringing? You are hiding money from me. The man says, you, are, you, are, you know, and all kinds of things. And God is watching. He's saying this time is supposed to be prayer time. Have you seen families doing devotion in the morning? And the father stops. Say, what, what devotion are you doing? And he picks a scripture by himself. Just because he wants to quarrel somebody who is not bringing resources. And devotion that is supposed to be a time of love and fellowship ends up becoming quarrel. A lot of people accuse pastors who steal church money. And you see, the truth is that except God shows you the way out, otherwise this thing will press you one day, you will touch what you should not touch. Hello? Please talk to me. Don't trivialize what pressure can do in the life of a man. When you are pressured to a point where you are pushed to the wall, you will be surprised at the compromises you will be able to make. We are losing believers per second per second because of poverty and what it can bring. Did you know someone sent me a text one time and told me that the, whether they wanted to give the person a job, God is my witness, but that the person who was helping to facilitate it said they have to pay 250,000 naira 
before they will get the job. I said, so do you have the money? He said, no. She was, whether, I think it was a she, coming to just say, if I can, if God can use me. I said, no, God doesn't use me for those kind of things. God does not use me for those kinds of things. Now, it's easy to criticize them and say, you mean you love God and you are doing that. Until you find out that a family of 10 people is depending on one person's pocket to eat. It's a cost. It's not the will of God. Imagine, for instance, that I tell them to give me a bucket now. And while I'm preaching, I just, I just say, if the bucket comes close to you, there's something written on the bucket, just read it and do whatever it says. Look at how your mind, everything I'm saying, will just go down because I'm passing a bucket. You look at the bucket and look at what is written on it and just shut down and say, what is all this again? But do you not know that it is capital intensive to lift up the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. Did you hear what I said? The name of Jesus is not a feather you throw. It's heavy. It will take the shoulder of priests to take it up. It's easy to accuse men of God around. Oh, I like koinonia. They don't ask us to give anything. We just come and enjoy. We enjoy free dinner. And they pay money. And we, I like this kind of ministry. Other pastors should be like that. Uh -uh. Don't be quick to criticize my brothers and my sisters. If God does not show you the key to this gate, you will stand there and almost die. <laughs> We raise your banner high We shine your light so bright We sing in honor of you You will never walk in integrity If you don't have supplies I guarantee you in the name of the Lord You will never Walk in integrity. Life will push you to a point where you must compromise. You will preach something you didn't preach 10 years ago. Because you have found out that in that message now can come a way of helping your belly. Value. Now, but you see... The value, listen carefully, my brothers and my sisters. Just being valuable is not enough. You must ensure that that value is needed and useful within the context of your civilization. This is as simple as it is. That your value must be needed. Listen. Listen. Pastor, come. Let's assume you are selling this and I don't need it. Now I'm passing. You have this. I'm just giving an example. Yet I don't need it. Will I reward you? Are you valuable? Is your value useful to me? No. Do I need it? No. So you will still suffer although you are valuable. That's what is happening to many of us. There is almost nobody here that I know who has not recognized something that is valuable. And just because we found it, we start rejoicing and we believe life should just come and bless us. No, sir. There is a standard that demands reward. Because the me who is moving around, me too, I'm looking for something with my resources. And until I find the person with that something to the standard I consider rewardable, that is the only condition for releasing things. It's not enough to be valuable. Your value must first be needed and useful. Second, your value must be translated to a form where it is served with excellence. Excellence that relates to every level of mental development. Did you hear what I just said? That your value must be translated to products and services that are served with excellence. And excellence that can be able to be satisfying. 
to any kind of level. That means that the value you provide and the excellence attached to it may only be able to serve people who are middle class. That level of excellence may not suffice for the great who do not think price. Are we together now? So there are many of us who are doing things but that what we are doing I give you an instance. Our daddy is a prof here. Are we together now? Now, if you are a graduate, they are not going to call you to go and head an institute of something with all kinds of benefits accruing to it because you are a graduate but not graduate enough. You have not graduated enough to sit there. So the problem is not that you are not a graduate but you are not graduate enough. The question there is enough to the standard. Are we together now? The person who takes last in a race, I hope you know he has a time too that he finished, but he did not finish at enough time to get the gold medal. The question is not that they finish. The question is there is a time allocated. And whoever can beat the time is the one who gets the gold. So it's not enough to say you are valuable. As a man of God, let me come back to ministry. Because many of you have leave all those things. Let's talk ministry. So let me talk ministry. As a man of God, it's not enough to be called. You can be called. You can feel anointed. In fact, quite honestly, you can be anointed. But is it to the level that can bless the people who God told to bless you? Because for every destiny helper, there is a standard of grace that compels his resources to answer to you. God can tell me, or God would have put in my spirit to give Pastor Alpha a car, provided he heals my mad child. Are we together? Provided he does what? Not provided he prays in my house. The condition for that reward is that whoever can come with the level of grace that can take away madness in that house. So I'm anointed. I know scriptures. And I come to the house. And I roam around and I just pray. And at the end of it, they just thank me. They put malt in a bottle with straw. And they put donuts. And they escort me with it outside. And I go. It's not that God did not send them. Your level of value did not make it fair for that answer to come to you. That means when I sit in a meeting and grace is coming on me, God is lifting me to the standard that can match the helpers so that their resources can now come to me. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Listen very carefully. Everybody who will bless you tomorrow is already alive today. Your level of grace has not risen enough to call them. That's why they are shifted to your tomorrow. If you enter that level of grace today, they will come today. I look at my life today and I see what people do to me. And I'm almost tempted to ask, where were you? Where were you when I was sucking ginger inside a straw? And I was a believer. Are we together? When I was trekking to First Bank without money in my account by faith, hoping that I would get miracle alert. Now you are receiving it free. It's just coming. There was a price. God has authorized Pastor Alpha. This is your prayer request for the next level. But your value is here. It cannot match. Until you are lifted to the level that matches. And so the Holy Spirit has the responsibility of upgrading the saints. Please listen carefully. Upgrading the saints to a level where their usefulness becomes worthy of being rewarded by any standard. Are we together now? That means Pastor Alpha gets to a point where someone will sit down and think with his wife and the Lord will say, Kai, build one of my servants a house. Why don't they think about you? 
because they don't think it's fair to give you that kind of house. Now, remember, they know you are called, but they think it's unfair. They believe that there are more rewarding ministers in terms of impact, kingdom impact, and the Spirit of God by Himself will take their minds to those people and say, that's the man you should bless. Please believe what I'm telling you. Yes. We've had people, my brothers and my sisters, I, I say this to the glory of God. We've had people live and travel from other nations and other cities to Koinonia, not for the program. Travel with seeds. And they said they sat down and agreed, either as a business enterprise, and said, no, since we love God, and before we started this business, we agreed that God should grant us grace so that we will bless others. And they leave their cities take flights, go through the rigor of coming to Zaria and all they are coming to do is apostle, we want to sow into Koinonia and we want to continue. And you ask them why and the man will say, I listen to one message, say value. Not message, say value. But that value had grace and content in it to rise to a level where it can smash the devil worrying that man. So the man listened to a message. And as he listened to the message, he fell asleep. And in that sleep, the message continued. And Jesus stepped in. The Jesus, he fasted for two months to see. He didn't see. But he listened to one message and climbed the ladder of a grace straight into an encounter. He would look for that person and reward him. That was why Nicodemus looked for Jesus even in the night. He traced him. The Bible doesn't tell us everything that happened there, but I'm convinced he came with honorarium. It's just my thinking. It's just my simple thinking. Forgive me if I sound arrogant, but there are some of you as you are seated right now, there are all kinds of envelopes in your pocket. You are waiting for us to share the grace so you will queue and spend time only to come and sow into my life. Now, I'm sorry that I'm the one saying this and I'm not by any way manipulating you, but it's the truth. Now, you are thinking, how will somebody stand for hours just to drop a seed to a man, whereas you beg the same person while he was on the queue and he didn't give you transport fare? Are you seeing how it is? There is no reward until your value rises to a point where it can be served with excellence. As a man of God, nobody will place a demand on your grace just because you are prayerful and just because you study. The truths that you communicate, must the impact of that word must be felt in the lives of the people. When it is done, clear the way for the rewards that will come. Now, you don't preach because of money, don't get me wrong. However, it is important possible my brothers and my sisters to be valuable to serve that value with excellence whether you sell it or give it free you must be rewarded it's a law by the grace of god and the privilege of god's hand god has granted me the opportunity to raise too many people around this nation and around the world for me to beg for bread my children will never beg for bread, even if I give bread to them and go to be with the Lord. Because people have been raised. And wisdom is justified by her children. Your value has not raised anyone, yet you want life to reward you. You see how unfair it is? Just because you think you are a graduate holding a certificate, does not mean that what have you given to the world that you demand value from? It's amazing how your relatives will not give you money, but they will run for a meeting and kneel down waiting for a man of God to pass so they will drop money. You beg them for rent. They didn't give you. Yet they are carrying four times that amount to give someone who is already blessed. Nobody really blesses a needy person. They bless valuable people. You must translate yourself from this needy mentality to a mentality of value. That even if you don't have money in your pocket, you can say in the name of Jesus, I'm coming for koinonia. There is an anointing that is coming. I'm not falling for nothing. Every time I fall, I rise upgraded in the spirit. And a day will come, I will put something in the realm of the spirit that will cause the nations to place a demand on my grace. 
Jesus climbed up the mountain and people followed him up the mountain. To the point that his influence threatened the scribes and the Pharisees. They said, no, this guy is stealing the show. If we don't do something about him, he will destroy us. Koinonia, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you are gathered here every week by the grace of God because we continue to strive to communicate truths to you that are applicable to every facet of your life. It's a formula that is unbendable. You would hear testimonies here. You would hear testimonies every week. That the word produced results. Nobody leaves what works. Did you hear what I'm saying? Nobody leaves what works. No, sir. The world does not have too many things that are working. So the options are few. There are not too many things working in this life. So when you find what works, you stay. And pay whatever price it takes to stay. That's why the presence of God is, 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 a, is a place and a zone you must desire and hunger for forever. Because you see, the presence of God does not just make you heaven bound. It makes you valuable. It truly does. Look at my life. The presence of God. That's where you find the anointing. So while I'm worshipping in His presence, I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love. You think I'm just wasting time singing. But while I'm singing and worshipping in His presence, there is an elevation in the spirit. A new anointing. Son, you have this anointing and that, but you don't have this one. Let me introduce this in your life. And I'm there just worshipping. The same way you are typing the letter in your office. Me too, I'm, 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 I'm doing all of that. The same way you are reading for a promotion exam. And all of a sudden, I step out and I see a grace that was not upon me yesterday. Now the grace has come. Meaning the person who will not bless me yesterday can now bless me. Because there is a grace that can now add him to the list of the blessings. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love I love your presence I love, I love I love you, Jesus I love, I love Shalabakato Saladat I love your presence I love, I love Listen, forget about bringing a valuable person down. You don't know how needy this world is until they find true value. All this issue of trying to bring people down is a joke. When you find especially value that is stamped with the hand of God, only God can bring that person down. I'm telling you this. Koinonia will continue to grow from glory to glory it's not just some recitation the formula has been given the scroll is not closed the seals have been broken it's been opened we have seen it with our eyes the things men do not have how could they resist it an anointing is not sold in the market an anointing is not stored in a bank the government does not have it so how dare you trivialize the power of God upon the hand of upon the life of a man and then assume it's not there your need will force you to remember that only the anointing can solve it listen you are seated now in this place to some of you you are attending a service I wish you could see in the realm of the spirit that you are climbing ladders some of you traveled from far you just thought you came for a service until you go back on Sunday on your little prayer group and you say, let us pray fire. And you see fire everywhere to an extent that you say, what is this? What is going on here? And everybody descends. They will stop calling you brother immediately. They, they will have to invent a name to show you you have risen in the spirit.
Let me tell you this. It's good to know how to cook. It's good to know how to do business. But my brothers and my sisters, be anointed. This is real value. Be anointed. Have something upon you that no man can buy. The same way you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. He said, Thou anointest my head. Give us that scripture. You did not anoint my cup. The goal is for my cup to run over, but the oil came on my head, and the result showed in my cup. It takes more than a good profession to prosper. It takes more than a good skill to prosper. There is only so much reward you can get from that angle. Ah, but when his hand comes upon you, blessed is the man that my God finds and puts grace upon you. Your life will be a wonder. You will, you will walk upon gold as dust. I'm telling you this. Listen, let me tell you. All these money, money things you see people chase around. Most people don't have any money. They just have enough to solve their basic needs. So they look rich. They are poor. And yet that's what distracts a lot of people. But when you stand and say, Lord, put something in my life. Put something upon me. I, I don't know why people don't pray that prayer. Oh. God, shorten my journey. I don't have time. Shorten my journey. Let there be an anointing on my profession. Listen, listen, listen. Come, Emeka, you are a doctor. Come, watch this. We are going to pray. This gentleman is a doctor. When someone is sick, they will meet you for injection or meet you for whatever. Now, your profession does not determine who you bless. The anointing on your profession will make a rich man come as your patient. You see now, that one is not MBBS again. That one is the anointing influencing your possibilities. So a day that no doctor is around, the billionaire comes and the Holy Ghost, not your profession, pushes you there. You have a restaurant. You are a chef. Congratulations. But not being anointed, you will continue to cook for poor people for wherever. They will finish eating and then back in and say, I don't have 10 naira. I don't have 15 naira. But when the anointing comes upon it, the anointing will make you go to visit your auntie just when a politician is there and he says, I'm looking for someone. There is a meeting and he says, ah, my daughter is here. That one is no longer your skill. That one is a grace from heaven that comes upon me. Listen, you can be a preacher and have a good understanding of scripture, mighty exegesis of scripture, and they keep inviting you to different places. Wonderful, you will be blessed, but the eye of your helpers will never meet you until there is a grace. That grace is what will take your seed, your message, whatever you represent, to the ears of the man that can announce your ministry. How would I have risen from Zaria here? How many public address structures do you have? I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on any social media as a person. It's not everything that is just good preaching. It's not everything that is just... Mm -mm. There is an anointing that announces. It's called an oil of gladness. It can take men and make you above your fellows. Please listen. The financial tsunami that is coming to destroy men, a time will come where you will see people. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, a sadist, but a time will come where everything you have, every other person has it. You are educated, you are educated. And then the other person contending with you is a tribesman of the director. What then is your advantage? There are things when you have, only the rich look for you. There are things when you have, only the poor look for you. There are things when you have, only sick people look for you. 
there are things you have only those in need of legal issues look for you there are things when you have only hungry people look for you but there are things when you have all men will seek for you all men all men god designed it that way so when jesus was about to start his ministry having done everything he did the bible says he went to the wilderness and cried there 40 days 40 nights fasting and he returned in the power of the spirit and then Acts chapter 10 tells us how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power the bible says he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed something humorous happened today i i have never been to shiloh as a person and i was just sitting today and all of a sudden i got a text the pastor in charge of registering pastors in shiloh sent a text to my phone and said man of god are you coming we want to arrange your reservations and this i said what is this now listen i'm just saying it to encourage you i don't know that man from adam are we together now yet there is somebody who will not stay in the secret place but will keep lobbying you will go there and be roaming around the gate like a thief they will say please join the members or sit in the overflow listen once you are struggling to be accepted in a realm and they are rejecting you it's a sign that the anointing has not opened the door go back don't force yourself just go back when you try to enter as a pastor you see other pastors and you are fighting for acceptance and they are saying mr man we invited a b not you will consider you one day stop making a mockery of yourself go back to the secret place and say where is the god that puts oil on the head of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters when what comes upon great men comes upon you there is no door that will remain closed thou anointest my head with oil is someone ready to pray tonight this is the value that i brought for you that if you if god grants you access to the anointing and you can serve that anointing with excellence there is no door listen you don't have to leave your profession it just needs to be anointed many of us are educated but our certificates are not anointed many of us are skilled but your skill needs to be anointed i'd like you to find a corner our time is gone for the next five or ten minutes worship team just set the atmosphere for us find a place and blast in tongues and pray in the spirit and cry to god and say lord you are the giver of all good things you don't win all good things Lord, put something upon my life. Place an anointing upon my head that will answer to the needs of kings, that will answer to the needs of nobles. Place an anointing upon my degree. Place an anointing upon my master's. Place an anointing upon my PhD, O oh God. Place an anointing upon my profession. I am a lawyer, but only an educated one. Can you put an anointing upon my legal practice? Your usefulness. Amplified by the presence of the anointing. Worshippers pray, Lord I can sing, I have written songs, but let an anointing come upon my song so called. Lord I'm a businessman, it is true that I've paid my price, doing well learning the principles of business, but let an anointing come upon the value that I provide. Outside, make sure you're praying. Overflow, make sure you're praying. Overflow. My ministry overflows. My church overflows. Thou anointed my head with oil. Say 
the anointing is smellable you can be within a vicinity and the spirit of someone begins to know ah, this man is here let me go and see this person say, i knew it i knew you were there hold on wait for me and the person will go and bring something i like you to pray the fragrance of your glory Lord, let it smear my life that as I walk my life becomes a walking miracle. to pray two more prayer points i'd like you to cry and say lord i am the one who will break the cycle of hardship in my entire lineage there are many of us here listen listen let me tell you the truth you will be a wicked person if you don't think of your children the power of god is here i sense a strong anointing i'd like you to pray that the grace upon your life will crush hardship once and for all over your family lift your voice and pray from the womb. Listen, until that time, they never named anybody John. So they wanted to give him a name, an identity like what was the status quo. But when the angel came, you see that Zechariah wanted to corrupt the destiny of someone who was going to be the greatest of all prophets according to the mouth of the Lord. And the, the father's mouth was shut so that the destiny be preserved. Listen, when you do uncommon things, uncommon men come to you. When you do common things, common men come to you. You are going to pray, Lord, anoint me for unusual things, unusual dimensions, unusual ministry, unusual business, unusual medical practice. It has to be unusual, no table they said. That is not a good miracle that happened. Lift your voice. Lord, an unusual prophet, an unusual apostle, an unusual evangelist, an unusual veteran, an unusual chef. Come on, pray. An unusual IT consultant, an unusual doctor, an unusual professor. Of the workings of the spirit, unusual dimensions. 
Listen. Listen. Let me tell you this. I shared with you years ago that a man of God was praying for me. And that man said something that disturbed me. I went to sow a seed to him. And he said, Oh Lord, create a problem that only him can solve. I, I, I thought that was selfish. When you talk of kingdom, kingdom is not a thing of competition and the rest. But he said he may have prayed his prayer, whether I believe it or not. It was later as I began to grow that I understood that, ah, he was not being selfish. He was just saying, Lord, distinguish him. Put him in a level. Let me tell you, Rehopos means God has given me my space. There is your space in life. That you dig a well, they can come and close it. But there is a space in ministry. There is a space in business. You are going to pray one prayer. Lord, allocate my space and keep me there. A space that is beyond competition. Beyond contention. There are names that when you call on earth, there is no basis for comparing them. There are names when you call in ministry, in business, in family life. They are outstanding. They are in a class of their own. Your father God is in a class of his own. Cannot be compared with any other God. Listen. I met I just returned from a trip and I met a particular music minister and he came to me and hugged me I said oh I've been blessed by your songs I'm happy to see you now and he looked at me he said apostle this is not the first time you're meeting me I said, really? He said, in 2012, I was in a meeting. I was nobody. You called me out and prophesied to me. And I said, I did? He said, yes. That you prophesied to me that the wells of worship, the fountain, will begin to rise. And that from that time, his life had moved forward. And while we were in the meeting, the Lord spoke to, me, to him again and I told him, I said, you are going to write just one song, one, that will surpass what your songs have done again. It doesn't take too many things to lift you. Just one noise by the hand of God. There was one earthquake. Bam! What did Ben Carson do to be great? Just one surgery, and that was it. When you call all the music ministers in this nation, it's usually one song. Many songs they wrote, but one song. Bishop T.D. Jakes wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose, till today. No other book has brought him that kind of reward. Dr. Masmuro had written so many books, bestsellers. But when he wrote Rediscovering the Kingdom, that one book was a game changer. Please, can we borrow one more minute and say, Lord, what is the one thing that will announce me by your grace? Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, what is the one song? Lord, as a man of God, what is the one meeting? The one meeting that will announce my grace. The doctor, who is the one patient that I will treat and get out of poverty forever? One thing is needful. One thing, one thing. Pray, Koinonia. There is a God that answers. One encounter. When he is out with Jesus, changed his life. One encounter with Catherine Fullman, changed his life. One encounter, we are still praying, Lord, what is the one thing, the 
the one dimension. Who do I need to prophesy to for my life to change? Whose body must be healed through my hands? What is the one missing that will announce your grace upon my life? What is that one publication that the nations will hear? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think it was last year, last year or early this year, I had the privilege of flying with Professor Wallace Soinka. And when I got into the aircraft, he was sitting on my seat. And I looked at him. I was standing face to face with a Nobel laureate. Very simple looking. And I thought about this thing again. It's not many things that lift people. They wanted to walk him so that I said, no, no, no. You can't do that. This is a great man. I use it as an opportunity to practice the law of order. Say, please keep him there. Just find whatever seat for me and let me sit. Why will I walk him up? Whereas I aspire that the world hear God's voice through me too. One thing. Have you not seen that great men are only lifted by one thing? If David didn't kill Goliath, he will continue to eat sheep meat till he dies there in the wilderness. The head of Goliath brought him a wife. The head of Goliath made him and his family tax free. The head of Goliath made him a king. One thing. One thing Jesus did, die on the cross, and he resurrected and was enthroned as king. Listen, I know our time is gone, but you are going to cry this one thing. Listen, for some of you, it may not be one thing, it may be one encounter with one person. We have a number of our worshippers here. This young man, Gashina, where is he? He's praying. This gentleman, it was one of his songs, just one of his songs that Nathaniel Bassi received. One of his songs. And this song just exploded this gentleman's ministry. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just need one encounter. I'm saying this to you. I've shared with you my experience with Jesus. It's not that I was not doing, I was not doing bad. I was already working in a measure of signs and wonders and this. But one solid encounter. Not this nonsense around that people say encounter with no proofs. Solid encounter where you meet the power of God. Apostle Babalola was roaming around in a forest when fire fell on his head from that forest. One encounter and changed his life. Archbishop Benson Idahosa, it was one encounter that turned his life and announced him. Bishop Oyedeko, one encounter, an 18 hour vision changed his life. Papa Iya Deboye, one encounter turned his life around. You don't need 10. Lord, what is the encounter? What is the idea? What is the song? Release it, cry, and say, Release it. Call on to me and I will answer. One encounter with the healing anointing will take you beyond the shores of this nation. One encounter with the prophetic grace will open you up to dimension. One conference that God will grant you access to rise to will lift you and take you high. my hands and I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, the fire that was fall on your life to shift you to the next level. I stretch my hands, receive that fire from heaven now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare 
where your reward system has become limited may you be upgraded to a higher dimension in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ listen i speak to you if you are in ministry here i stretch my hand i'm telling you it's time for men of fire to arise this lukewarm talkative thing around will continue to mock us we need people that know god and can prove his power and his grace this is what will change the society all this grammar up and down will not do much you need to bring god to the bible says the word became flesh i speak to you the kind of encounters that must put fire in your spirit may that fire fall on you in the name of jesus any man of god here any minister of the gospel here and those following online you have been pegged at a level of results only certain miracles happen only certain results happen in the name of jesus enter a new dimension a new dimension in the spirit and i pray for you in the name of jesus the orchestrations that must make you collide with the doors of the next season of your life we declare by the spirit of wisdom may god coordinate those orchestrations and make them happen for you in the name of jesus listen for some of you this grace will start waking you up in the night you will be surprised that at specific times sleep will leave you not forever but for a period of time because it is through those prayer times that a solid encounter that's when you will see a real angel for the first time not not lying and saying this and that no daniel was praying after 21 days an angel came there are some of you by reason of that prayer god will lead you to certain bookshops you will see an old book that was written by one general nobody knew you will buy that book and sit down and that's when the fire of your destiny will come upon you value encounters don't trivialize them encounters are, are the things that create conviction this our generation doesn't have conviction at all we just say everything and don't believe it He said, that which our eyes have seen, that which our ears have heard, that which our hands have handled, even of the word of life, that's what we preach. I pray for you, encounters with Jesus. There are some of you here, I speak in the name of Jesus. May the King of Kings himself visibly walk to your room. In the name of Jesus, may God open you up to these encounters. You will start having supernatural encounters. Encounters with the angelic. Encounters with the spirits of just men. Encounters with Jesus himself. In the name of Jesus Christ. For as long as we continue to fool ourselves that our finances are at the mercy of a lot of mundane things, the ease factor is the anointing. The ease factor is the anointing. When all is said and done, please get solid power in your life. Doesn't matter whether you are called into ministry or not. I was in a meeting about a week or so ago and one of the gospel ministers people were ministering and quite honestly i was blessed nothing spectacular but one of the gospel ministers came up and my god for just 10 minutes that gentleman has been a long time long time
time since I sat down under that corporate, that intense presence. Long time. Corporately, like in a meeting. Ah, I looked at him. I said, I know why now. I know why. This gentleman paid his price. When you hold this thing, it shows. It shows. You don't carry the anointing. You only carry it so that it will carry you. It's the anointing that carries you. May God anoint you. May God anoint you. May God anoint you. May God really anoint you. And may that anointing speak in your life. May it open doors of abundance. May that anointing open the hearts of men towards you. May it compel men to bring the resources of heaven to you. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord.